What's up guys? This is my uh, Punks Customs uh, 3D RC. This is their stage dive chassis kit. And I already did a build type review for this and I figured out I do a about probably about a 10 pack uh, review on this guy. You see some if you see my other videos there, you'll see some running footage. I had a creep body on it, a blue creep body on it, and I changed it out to this deadbolt body that I bought and uh, trimmed it up quite a bit for, for clearance. And uh, I also uh, put a, uh, a DSM, uh, one of these bungee cord winches. It's not really a winch, it's more or less of a recovery cord stretchy you know and you, you you stick it on there and it's you know uh, it, it comes in handy now and then i guess we'll see um but anyway i put one of those on and um also did some mods to this body uh you see it's cut really high up i probably have to do more cutting may add a stripe to it or something there um i kind of wish i had the clear body i could paint it something other than uh, you know this paramilitary uh, green uh, but uh, anyway uh, you also see that there's no light bar well the light bars is now a bumper I made that my bumper and uh, flipped it upside down and put those supports that were on it uh, put them to the inside and mounted them to my body uh, area there my body mounts and I got my body mounts in the back there. I made those on the lathe as well. Made my little uh, thumb screws on the lathe. I had to do some cutting on this to make it work. And then I took the the middle light bulb out and stuck my winch through there. So I think that's going to work pretty good. Um, you see the suspension's fully, uh, the, the weight of the axle's taking it down. So I'm going to run this full droop uh, while we're running. But uh, right now uh, my band's... Uh, aren't aren't heavy enough to hold up that front end. That's what you want, right? When you're running a full droop, nobody ever explains it, but um, you do not want it to hinder so much your axle dropping down. You want to hinder the body pulling up, right? When you're going up a hill, you don't want the body to to flip you upside down. So you don't want your 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 positive. Uh, spring rate to push that body away from the axle so that's how droop works nobody ever says this but that's how it works so uh, if you disagree with me you would be wrong okay so that's that's why you dro you droop your suspension when you're going up and down hills your 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 rear end's not pushing you pushing your body forward and your front end's not pushing you away uh, or your body's not pushing you away from your hill Okay, and when you're side hilling, your body's not rolling uh, down the hill and taking your axles with it. So that's what droop is. Nobody ever really, everybody talks about it, but nobody ever really says what it does. That's what it do, does. It holds your body uh, and your chassis to the axles. Okay, so you want your chassis, you want your axle weight to still drop down, right? So when you're setting your droop up on your either your internal springs or you're, you're setting some rubber bands up, uh, however you want to do it, that's what you want, right? So uh, I'm going to pause the video here. I'm going to get this body off. It takes like 10 minutes now to get this body off, all right? So just hold on. All right, so there's the body off. That's what I had to do to get the body to work. I had to cut the front end off and... Uh, I got to do some Dremel work to that yet, smooth out that edge all the way around. And also the other thing, I got to paint the inside of that black. I just can't stand having a white body when you're, when you're side hilling and you, uh, you know, and you see that white underneath, that's, that's just awful. Uh, but yeah, here's a, uh, here's the mount for my light bar that I made into a bumper. You, you, it mounts on your, on your shock, on your, uh, body post there. I just have screws in there. I had to make that little, uh, this little bracket up out of Kydex. But yeah, you just pop those off, and then that goes forward, and there you go, right? So um, that's that's the rear. I'll probably cut some of this out and hollow this out to make that a little bit lighter. But that's the rear that I made, and um, 
then I'm running the Quick Run Fusion SE, and that is the um, uh, 1200 kV with an 18 tooth pinion stock Capra transmission and uh, uh, snow overdrive front or, uh, or uh, uh, rear underdrive yet. Uh, pretty much just running it that uh, the way uh, the Capra comes uh, and uh, running a negative G. Uh, support in the middle there negative G bumpers front and rear uh, I believe that's the rear bumper I'm just running it both uh, front and rear also have the negative G uh, link riser in the back and uh, so the uh, this quick run fusion just a quick uh, note to that if you program this and um, you need your hobby wing programmer from your 1080 ESCs every time you bought a 1080 you got one of these with it and you so you probably got like 10 of them around so don't throw them away so you program your uh, I think you can program the pro with it as well but I'm not positive but you do have to uh, get your manual out for your for your fusion SE because this uh, these numbers aren't going to match what's on here so uh, so anyway that I you asked me how I found that out right so anyways, yeah, you'll see some things that don't correspond. Uh, so yeah, I got that set up. And you see my battery mount in underneath there. And that is mounted on my, sh on my uh, axle, or not on my axle, but on top of my servo, which is servo mounted axle. So all my battery weight is on my axle. Again, you might see my weighted wheels. And uh, let me flip this upside down. I'll show you a couple more things before I go. Okay, look how low that transmission is. I made it lower than it was before. That's probably the lowest Capra transmission you'll ever see. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's it's way down there. I got it. Uh, I cut some of the lug off and uh, just kept trimming it down, trimming it down to where it's the can is just about touching, right? Touching the. Uh, Touching the, uh, touching down here, the skid. So we're right there. I can still sneak my wires underneath, so I got room for that. But yeah, that's what I did there to get that lower. Uh, I just uh, thought it was sticking way up there too high. Okay, so uh, so on the underneath here, I made I made some uh, links. I made a set of links. I uh, made aluminum in the back and uh, brass in the front and I tapered my links um, so they're they're heavier in the front I got one here if you could see that that's one I broke off I, for, I think I was trying to bend it and I broke it off but anyways I don't think anybody tapers their links they're uh, but yeah, I turned them down in the lathe and left the left the front heavy. I even thought about making them two piece, aluminum in the rear and brass in the front. Thought that would be pretty cool too. But ah, eh, just uh, you know, you gotta you, you you just can't do it all sometimes. You got other things I got to do in life, you know. Uh, so, anyways, that's uh, that's what I did. I made I made my uh, brass links and then aluminum in the back. Bent them a little bit. Uh, to give them some like a high clearance uh, link, uh, the capper links that they come with it are they're fine. They're uh, they're nice and beefy. Uh, they got a hole in the middle. The one's right-handed, one's left-handed thread, so you can you can change the your uh, your your length. So um, just to, on a side note, you know if you want to make your own um, links. You can use your stock links and bend them. All right, so um, you can bend them in a vise and put like maybe a uh, put a wrench over that and just bend it towards you. You know, you want about 10 degrees, 10 to 15 degrees, and then uh, you're thinking, oh yeah, that's going to change the length of the link. Well, you would be right, but it doesn't change it that much, right? So you just wind your uh, uh, your rod ends out. Maybe a turn, turn, uh, a turn each, 
because if you figure that angle out, say 12 degrees um, over this one in one inch or one and a half inches, uh, you're going to see that it changes the length maybe 40 thousandths or less than a sixteenth of an inch. So uh, you can you can just wind out uh, your uh, your rod ends out a little bit to make that make that up. So you don't have to buy a whole another set of links, right? Uh, so if you have a TRX4 and you want to make a, the clearance a little better, bend your links up and uh, yourself and wind those out a little bit. Save yourself like 50, 60 bucks, right? Whatever, whatever a set of links costs. So, uh, you know, that's uh, that's something you can do. If you don't like it, you can bend them back. Uh, but you know, you gotta be careful. You know, this uh, sometimes, uh, you know, you can you can break stuff. But uh, but you know, you just uh, you bend them a little bit at a time, and you get them to where the right angle. Like I said, about tw about 12 degrees. I think I, I bent these up 15, maybe in the front, and about 10 in the rear. Uh, and that seems like it's going to work out well. I've been running this Punks Customs a good bit. You see a couple of videos there, um, and it's really a really decent setup, right? So if you have a Copra, and you've had it for a couple years, and you're like, yeah, this is really nice, but you know, I want to change it into something different, you buy one of these uh, chassis rail setups, and it comes like I think I went over what it comes with, all you really need from your capper is your axles and your transmission, whatever uh, drive train you're, you're using there, or whatever electrics you're using, and uh, and they supply the rest. Okay, and then I'll just give a, I don't know if you can see that there. So you go to his website and uh, you'll see a bunch of other stuff there too. Pretty good stuff, right? So. Uh, I can't think of much else to say uh, about this uh, setup. It's uh, pretty decent with this this quick run fusion. The 18 tooth, uh, it's about right, I would say. Um, if you're wondering what you should get, you know the 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 18 k 1800 kV might be better for this. You could then run a, a lighter pinion, like maybe a 12 tooth. Uh, or or be even uh, 14 or 12 probably probably 12 would be better uh, you could run a smaller pinion but uh, the 1200 kV is seemed to be more available I was able to find one they're 70 bucks and I tell you that, that is the new uh, best cheap combo you can get it, it, it replaces the 1080 in my in my opinion uh, the only thing, the only thing, like if you're if you're running a 1080 with a with a, a smaller can, you know, with like a like a 540 motor, because you don't have room back here, that might be, you know, the only reason to have uh, on a budget the 1080. Uh, but this this guy, these run smooth. They're waterproof. Uh, they they modulate nice. Good power. Uh, so it's uh, the, the 1080 does have more power. Like if you had a, if you're running a TRX four six, uh, a TRX six, and it weighs like 14 pounds or whatever, yeah, you, you may need the 1080. But this rig's about five and a half pounds with a battery, uh, even with these heavy, uh, heavy wheels in the front there, and it just uh, pops this thing around no problem. So uh, so yeah, the 10, uh, the 1080. Uh, Still a great deal, but this $70 Fusion, you know, it, it just, uh, and it's so nice. It comes, you, I don't know about you guys, but I'm kind of going uh, uh, I'm going a little long here, but I, I had a castle system in this, and they're really great, but man, it, what a pain to set up. You got all that soldering to do because they don't come with a BEC anymore, and then you get it plugged in, and it doesn't work. So then you got to figure out what am I doing wrong that it doesn't work. So then you got to get your app out on your phone and go through all that nonsense. Figure out well, oh now I got it working, but it's running in reverse. How come my steering goes that way? Oh, they got to do all that, you know. And how come I, you know, this is not working? And then you go through all that stuff with the app and mess around with it, and then finally you get it to work pretty good. Where the hobby hobby wing, I plug it in, and I think I might have had to reverse the direction of the motor. And I'm ready to go, right? No soldering. It's all waterproof. Oh, and another thing. Yeah, Castle gives you these, like, wire that's, like, this long, right? 
So then you got to wire, you got to solder extensions on everything to get it to where it needs to go. They got to come up. They they got to up their game. I'm sorry. I have, and I run them like I I run them on all this stuff. Castle Systems, and uh, I'm just fed up with them. Ne never again. I even you know in my bashers, no, I'm just running these hobby. The hobby wing is just, I don't know. It it's just easier to deal with. They don't. I, I've yet to really have too many problems with them. Might have, I might have burned up a couple, uh, a couple 6S uh, in the past. Some of some of their stuff, um, but yeah, just this, this 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 setup is is really terrific. I really enjoy uh, just how easy. You know, hobby's supposed to be fun. You know, it's not supposed to be frustrating. And you put this on here. And you probably have a programming card already. You don't need no app on your phone. You know, you just plug it in and it works beautifully. All right, guys. See you later.